In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel and chapter 2, 26 through 28. But before we get there, I do want to set the stage just a little bit. You have King Nebuchadnezzar who has asked for his dream to be interpreted. He's angry that none of the magicians or the Chaldeans can seem to do this. And so in his rage, he says, you know what? I'm just going to wipe out everybody. I'm going to kill all the ma magicians. And then Daniel and his friends who happen to be wise men from Jerusalem, they say, uh, why, why is he doing this? And they have the situation explained to them. And so their reaction is, Daniel says, oh, I'll do it. I'll interpret his dream. And so they sort of pause on this initiative to kill all the wise men and the magicians so Daniel will have a chance to interpret the king's dream. And the David and his friends get together. They have a prayer meeting, essentially. They pray to God for Daniel to be able to interpret this man's dream. And then we had the other day that we find out that God does reveal the nature of the king's dream, because not only does he not know the interpretation of the dream yet, he doesn't even know what the dream is about. The king has refused to tell anybody. And he says, if a person can tell me what I actually dreamed, then they will be able to correctly interpret it, which actually was kind of smart on Nebuchadnezzar's part, because otherwise people could just make up what the interpretation is and get it wrong. And so this way he knows that if somebody is telling him what his dream actually means, they do have some kind of supernatural ability. And since none of the pagans actually do, and they don't have any connection to the true God, then they aren't able to do it. So he comes across Daniel and his friends, and Daniel receives this vision at night. He praises God. He prays to him and thanks him for his wisdom, thanks him for his providence in this. And then we see, finally, it is time for Daniel to go before the king in Daniel 2, verses 26 through 28. The king said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered before the king and said, As for the mystery about which the king has inquired, neither wise men, conjurers, magicians, nor diviners are able to declare it to the king. However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days? This was your dream and the visions in your mind while you were in your bed. So a couple of things to unpack here that Daniel very quickly realizes what is going on. He wants Nebuchadnezzar to know what is going on too. And so he gives a commentary here. Now I want you to consider this because let's look at the context and what was going on. King Nebuchadnezzar has already promised great riches and rewards to anybody that can interpret his dream. He's saying, if you have the power to do it, then you will be greatly rewarded for your ability to do this. And Daniel does what, by the world standards, is the absolute stupidest thing you can do, again, by the world's wisdom, which is he walks in there and immediately tells the king, yeah, this power isn't mine. I'm not doing it. I'm not the one that's interpreting your dream. He goes in and he says, magicians cannot interpret dreams. Conjurers can't interpret dreams. Diviners, seers, whatever you want to call them. Humankind cannot interpret this dream for you. Only the God of heaven, which by the way, the Chaldeans actually sort of accidentally alluded to earlier, sort of in a, um, I guess what you would call an accidental prophecy by them. <laughs> Um, they're saying exactly what Daniel is saying here. He's saying, no man can tell you this. Only the God in heaven will be able to translate your dream. And so that shows for Daniel, who is still very much a young man at this point, we're thinking maybe teenage, at the very most, maybe early 20s. So he's saying, wise men aren't going to help you. Conjurers aren't going to help you. Magicians aren't going to help you. There is one person that can help you, and that is the God of heaven. And that is who I'm going to tell you about tonight, right now. Man, 
not only does that take a fair bit of courage, but he's also essentially saying, power's not in me. That shows a great deal of humility on Daniel's part as well. Because he's foregoing and saying that he's willing to forego Nebuchadnezzar's rewards and his praise and everything. He's saying, this stuff isn't me. God's the one that told me this interpretation. I didn't do it. So if you want to thank somebody, thank him. If you want to give credit to somebody, give credit to him. And this is exactly the attitude that we as Christians should be having in our day-to-day lives. Whenever we do something good or right or we help out a neighbor or we do something great when it comes to charity work or we share the gospel with somebody and it turns their life around, we should say, look, it's, it's not us. I mean, I tell people that all the time. One of the lines that I use when people talk to me about my biblical knowledge, I'm like, look, it's not me. I just happened to read a book. That's not much of a testament to who I am. I'm not the guy who invented water. I just happen to know where a well is. That's all I am. And that's all Daniel is too. And he recognizes that and understands that. And he's telling King Nebuchadnezzar, if you want to have wisdom, he's saying this in a roundabout way, but if you want to know wisdom, if you want to know more about your dream and you want to know the true God of heaven, then this is the person that you need to seek out. You don't do it through me. You go to God. And so God is using me sort of as a conduit. I'm just God's tool, his messenger. I'm not anything special. Just because God happens to be using me to translate his message to you does not mean there's anything inherently special about me. If you want to give credit to somebody, give it to the Lord of heaven that gave me this ability. And so whatever gifts that we have, whether it's like me being a great speaker or other people that are great with kids or great with visiting people in hospitals, whatever gifts we have, let us remember to acknowledge that any ability that we have goes to our creator, goes to the God of heaven, just like Daniel witnessed here. And this is the same God that he talks about revealing mysteries and has shown Nebuchadnezzar. And so he's giving credit to God even for Nebuchadnezzar's dream. He's saying, God is showing you what is going to happen in the latter days. And you're going to be able to understand that because I'm here to help translate. And so on both sides, on both coming and going, it's all God's doing. It's all God's providence. God sent the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. God allowed the dream to be interpreted by Daniel, his prophet. And so God is the one in control of all things here. And so because of that, he's the one that deserves our gratitude. He's the one that deserves our praise. And when we, as individuals, are looking for somebody to give credit to, it needs to be to God. See, we as Christians, all we should be is mirrors. We can't produce light ourselves. When somebody is enlightened or made better by our influence, it's not because we're so great and we're so brilliant. It's because we are reflecting the greatness of God through us. That's what it means to be made in God's image. And that's what it means to be conformed to the image of his son, like it says in Romans. We are putting on Christ in love. And so when people see something great about us, it's not because they're seeing us. We're flawed human beings. What they are seeing is the mantle of Jesus Christ cloaked around us. And if we wear that mantle, we better be careful and understand that, that, is, that we are acting as a representative of the God of heaven just as Daniel was. But in doing so, We can greatly improve the status of someone else's life. And when we do that, all we need to do is point them back to God to give him the credit, him the glory, and help them understand that he is the one that can help them better their lives, not us. Stay the course, friends. I really love personal liberty. I believe in freedom of expression and freedom of association. And so it is completely up to you whether or not you want to like this video and subscribe to the Tactics Radio YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to Tactics Radio on YouTube, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.